Thank you. I'm going to just take it like this. Uh, thank you so much, Jason, for that very nice introduction and for your terrific leadership. Uh, I also, Jason will forever be for me, the person who introduced me to Cassetta and their amazing sandwiches and chocolate chip cookies. So thank you for that as well. Uh, it's really terrific to be here and to get this chance uh, to be, uh, to spend a few minutes with all of you and to thank you for the great work that you all do uh, to make our downtown uh, one of the incredible strengths of our community um, and really one of the best in the country. Uh, I'm gonna share a few of the exciting things that we're working on uh, at Madison, but I also just wanna say that I so, I mean, we, uh, we and downtown Madison are deeply intertwined. Our strength is your strength and vice versa. Well, the University of Wisconsin-Madison would not be what it is without the amazing uh, surrounding community. And though I recognize that we probably sometimes add a little bit, you know, noise and rowdiness that goes beyond what some of you might wish, I think we also add a huge amount to this community. And so this partnership is just incredibly important and needs to be bi-directional. And so that's really my, my core message, appreciation and a commitment to working together uh, for the common good of the community, uh, the university, and um, you know all of Madison, Dane County, the state, and beyond. Um, now, before I say a little bit, I'd just love to know how many of you, both of our, we, we've had some Badger, uh, Badger speakers already. How many of you are Badgers? Raise your hand. Wow, look at that, right? So give yourselves a round of applause, people. That's awesome. Is anyone here working on a degree right now? Okay, not, not today, not somebody. Oh, look, raise your hand loud and proud. Yes, let's give you a round of applause. That's awesome. And how many of you have children, maybe even grandchildren, nieces or nephews who are current students or alums? All right, pretty good number two. And how many of you make use of university resources in some way to solve business problems or hire grads? Literally just about everyone. And how many of you come to games or lectures or concerts or maybe the terrace? Well, so you've just made my point. I really could sit down now. We are intertwined, right? This is, this is a joint project, a joint enterprise, and our, our, we, we are operating in the common good. I love seeing all those hands in the air. That's just, uh, that's just fabulous. Now, I've got to say, I've personally had a really good time beginning to get to know downtown over the past year. Um, I actually remember... Uh, my first visit to downtown after I had the, the opportunity, the job, which was the farmer's market. I, uh, uh, my vice chancellor for legal affairs took me out at my request to check out the farmer's market and it was just spectacular. It was such a wonderful, special thing um, to go around and see all of the incredible, uh, everything from you know produ produce to brats to so much else. And um, I say this coming from LA, which is also pretty proud of its farmer's markets, but this one is, I think, just amazing. And I've, uh, I've, I think I've eaten not just at Cassetta, but at actually almost an embarrassing number of the various food opportunities downtown. So uh, I'll take suggestions on any that I might have missed, but I've, I've tried a lot of them and boy, are we lucky to have so many amazing different kinds of cuisines and so many excellent places to eat and shop and engage and participate in um, you know, the new urbanism, right? And to, to create communities that are, uh, that are walkable and um, connected. So it's easy to see why Madison won, won so many best of awards. And it's also easy to see why Madison is actually uh, bringing more uh, young professionals um, and young people into Wisconsin and frankly, the upper Midwest than any other uh, town around, right? That's a pretty amazing statistic and it's important for our future, for your future, um, all of that. Um, it's certainly also the case that uh, uh, a vibrant downtown is a huge selling point for uh, our students, um, both those who are from Wisconsin and those who are from everywhere across the country and the globe. That, um, that, that when they walk around, when they see what's going on, when they see the energy, that's um, a big selling point for us. And especially compared to some of our Big Ten counterparts, it's really a huge relative strength. Right, um, and so I uh, see that and absolutely uh, appreciate that. 
I want to say a word about our incoming class. Uh, they're, they're on their way. They'll be here very soon. We had more applications than we've ever had in the history of our institution. We had 68,000 applications. Um, and that was up 6% from just the year before. We're expecting roughly 8,000 new freshmen, and they will come from 71 Wisconsin counties. I'm sorry that we're missing one county. Like, we, we want to hit them all, but this year, unfortunately, we're missing Iron County. Uh, 49 U.S. states, everybody but, but Maine. Um, and 52 different, I don't know, I don't know why, we try, right? Uh, 52 countries. Uh, we include the top five are China, India, South Korea, Saudi Arabia, and Malaysia, but we've got folks from 52 different countries coming to join our class. This is a little bit smaller than last year, and that's on purpose. We were bigger than we meant to be last year. Too many people said yes. And so this year, we really um, went pretty conservative on the admissions process because we did not want to uh, uh, risk being too large, um, that creates just a lot of pressures on everything from housing uh, to uh, making sure we have enough sections of classes and for students to get into them. And we want to we want to be sure to protect the truly excellent and transformative experience that we're trying to uh, provide. And so, especially until we can try to provide a little bit more housing, um, we wanted to bring this number down to make it a step more right sized. That does mean it was an exceptionally competitive year, more demand, less supply. So uh, if anyone has a new freshman starting this fall, uh, you should certainly be very proud. This was a, a tough year um, to have this opportunity. Um, we're happy about these strong numbers, but there are some headwinds, which I will make quick mention of. Um, as some of you may know, there's a decrease in the number of Wisconsin high school grads going to college. In 2018, about 60% pursued higher education of some kind upon graduating from high school. And now in 2022, only about 50% did. Uh, it's unclear whether this is a medium term cultural shift or whether we're still seeing some of the pandemic dynamics. Um, there's also you know, a lot of talk about whether you need a college degree and whether a college degree is worth it. And there's a lot of national discourse around those questions. Some of that is perfectly legitimate. It's, it's not for everyone. College doesn't need to be for everyone. There are many ways to have opportunities in life. But some of it is based on frankly, false premises. There's a lot of evidence that shows that in aggregate, a college degree enhances earnings, and uh, we should recognize and understand that data. It might not apply to every individual, but in aggregate, it's clearly true. And the other thing is people talk about the great expense of going to college, and it's true. It is a big investment, but we are doing a lot at UW-Madison to make it affordable for Wisconsinites who uh, aren't of substantial means. And I hope, how many of you have heard of uh, Bucky's Pell Pathway and Bucky's Tuition Promise? Raise your hand if you've heard of them. Okay, so that's awesome that in this group of Badgers here in Madison, in Dane County, that most of you have heard of the programs. If we get around around the state, we don't see that everyone has heard of them, and not everybody even always believes that they're real. But please help us share the word. They are real. If, you, if your family uh, earns at the Wisconsin median or below, you will not pay, your child will not pay any tuition to come to us at UW-Madison. And if your family qualifies for a Pell Grant, those are federally funded uh, loans for families of lower means sending kids to college, then not only will you pay no tuition, but we will meet all of your remaining costs of attendance, housing, food, uh, incidentals, books, we'll even make doing things like studying abroad possible. Um, and so for needy families, um, there really are very feasible pathways to getting through Madison debt-free. And um, I don't know that that message is as widely understood as it is. That doesn't mean college is an investment. Um, it is, and it doesn't mean that for, you know, middle and upper middle class families that it's not sort of a, um, it can take a, a, a toll on your pocketbook. And um, so I don't mean to make light of these questions about the expense of college. But here in Madison, um, as you probably know, we had a tuition freeze for 10 years. And so we are actually about the biggest bargain around for Wisconsin residents. And, and frankly, that's put a lot of pressure on, on university finances. Um, <clears throat> now, the second trend is demographic. We are heading toward a big drop in the number of students who will be graduating high school in the Midwest. Between 2027 and 2047, here in Wisconsin, we expect to lose about 6,000 high school graduates just because of demographic shifts. Illinois is expecting an even steeper drop 
and they're a state that send us a lot of a lot of uh, young people. Um, same thing in California and New York, two of our biggest sending states. Um, there are some states that aren't going to see this drop, but they aren't states that tend to be as focused on sending students to us. So these are just some of the headwinds as we think about the admissions uh, and demographic picture uh, looking ahead. But we, uh, we are a, a highly desirable school. We're kind of even a hot school nationally. And so unlike some of our system counterparts that are really struggling to fill seats, we are fortunate to have substantial demand. And we also don't define ourselves by how many students we say no to. We want to accept students who can be successful with us. We are a selective institution, but many schools view it as a point of pride that they're only taking X percent or Y percent. If we could, we'd take every student we thought could be really successful and do well with us. We don't have the space or the infrastructure to do that, but we don't think that the way to define whether we're excellent is by how many people we say no to. And so we also don't try to push. Some schools out there put a lot of energy into buttressing their application numbers with kids who don't have a chance of getting in. Um, and they sort of sell the possibility when it's never going to be real. And we try not to do that, right? So we don't try to falsely increase those numbers just so that we can be more uh, selective on a metric like that. Unfortunately, some of the rankings vehicles care about some of those metrics, so that isn't always ideal from that perspective, um, but we do think it's the right thing to do. We are um, growing our efforts to recruit candidates. Our team made more than 150 stops all over Wisconsin last year, and we've grown that team. Um, and we also do some recruiting nationally and across the globe. Um, we very much do hope that many talented graduates of Madison's high schools will choose us. Um, let me introduce just very briefly one uh, such student. This is David Vasquez Rojas. He's a Madison West grad. He's first generation. He's the first in his family to go to college. Um, and his parents have, have you know, struggled some in a way that many of you will understand. They were just getting their restaurant off the ground when COVID hit. Um, and they made sure, nonetheless, that David attended summer programs at UW-Madison, and those helped him envision himself as a student here. They helped him understand that college was for him and that he could succeed. And his hopes are eventually to earn a doctorate in pharmacy. Um, and he actually is, he, he earned an associate degree from Madison College while he was still in high school. And he is part of the first cohort of students who will be attending UW-Madison with the help of Bucky's Pell Pathway, which I just mentioned um, uh, a, a few minutes ago. Yeah, thank you. I will note that Bucky's Pell Pathway does not use any state funding um, for its goals. Um, and so I really appreciate it. it is partly our alums and the support of our philanthropic community that has made this program possible. Um, I uh, would love a world where the state also uh, wanted to take more responsibility for helping uh, lower income students be able to afford college. But we're very fortunate that we have been able to do this and we're excited to continue this. Um, now, I will say that I want to say a word about diversity, equity, and inclusion, a topic that has been much in the news recently. Uh, and I will say this, bringing people from a huge variety of backgrounds to UW-Madison is hugely important. Diversity is a core value for us at the university, and we think it's critical if we're going to help create uh, students who can be graduates, who can flourish in a complex multicultural wor wor world. Um, now, when I say diversity, I mean diversity in all forms, race, gender, culture, socio socioeconomic background, uh, urban and rural, political and religious diversity, all of these things strengthen us. We, there's a lot of psycho, there's a lot of evidence, a lot of social science evidence showing that diverse teams really do make better decisions. That when you put people in a room with different backgrounds and experiences to work on hard problems, the solutions they come up with, the questions they ask, the answers they find are strengthened by the, those kinds of differences. And this is and will remain uh, a priority for us. Uh, we've made some progress on some kinds of diversity. Uh, with racial diversity, we've had about a 50% increase in the number of students from historically underrepresented groups in just the last few years. Um, but 
we also face some headwinds here. Most of you probably are aware of the Supreme Court opinion that, um, that removes race-based affirmative action as a tool in the toolbox. That is one tool that we were using at Madison, and so it is forcing us to make some changes. But we are looking at legal ways that we can continue to prioritize, making sure that we have uh, 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 an entering class that brings diversity of all kinds uh, to our community, um, and that will remain um, a priority. I will say that there's also political headwinds on these issues. You probably also all saw that the system took a little bit of a budget cut over, over some of these issues. And um, my view is that we have to listen thoughtfully and carefully to the critiques of who we are and what we do, but we also have to hold on to our values and explain um, why we believe what we believe and engage in dialogue. I do think that there is room for us to do a better job of showing that all kinds of diversity truly matter at UW-Madison. Um, and I think we need to do a better job both with underrepresented communities who don't always feel as strong a sense of belonging as we would like. And we have ongoing work that we are and must do in that space. And we have ongoing work, for example, in rural Wisconsin to show that that too, is our, those are communities that really matter. And as some of you may know, the group, the demographic group that is going to college right now in the lowest numbers is actually first generation rural white men. They are opting out of college. And that too is an issue that we need to worry about and take seriously. So when we talk about inclusion, inclusion needs to be a genuinely large bucket. Um, and at the end of the day, the aspiration is a university and frankly a world in which everybody can have a strong sense of belonging, that they can know that they are valued, that they can be their authentic self, and that they can bring that sense of belonging to their engagements with the community. We are not there, but that is uh, certainly the hope and the goal. Um, now, I, I'm not gonna say much about this. I'm aware of that the, the time is, is going fast, um, but some of you probably are well aware of the racist video that went viral last spring, um, and that was pretty tough for our community, and especially for our BIPOC students and our black students. Um, Moments like that are hard. Uh, that video is certainly not who we are or want to be, um, but it also happened and it had impact and effects on many in our community. And uh, we need to keep working on ways uh, to engage and support a strong sense of belonging and also a culture of care for one another. Um, we have a set of uh, of activities in the works. Um, we're just getting going on a small ad hoc committee. In fact, it's meeting today for the first time to look explicitly at issues of black inclusion on campus and what we might be able to do to do, do better in this space as just one example of some of the, the, the aftermath of that instant, which was a flashpoint, but a flashpoint for, for larger issues. And we're also in working right now, I'm working with tribal leaders um, to, to work to create a tuition waiver program for enrolled members of Wisconsin's uh, native tribes. Um, and we're uh, in, in dialogue with a proposal that, that, that we're talking to, to, to them about. Um, and uh, I'm hopeful that we can move forward with the program that will cover the the re all remaining scholarship needs for um, any Wisconsin tribal members who uh, join us as undergraduates and also with a pilot program for a couple of graduate degrees as well. Um, now, I know that this work around, uh, around diversity, equity, and inclusion has also been important uh, to DMI, and so I want to thank you for all of the work you do to help make Madison a place where all people can feel, it, can feel at home. Again, this is a work in progress. I don't think we, the city of Madison, are done with this work either. There is more to do, um, but I, I want to be a partner, and I also think that in community, we can all succeed. Um, I want to particularly give a shout out to Brenda Gonzalez for her involvement and help um, in this work at Madison and in the community. Now, 
we're about to uh, have a move in um, for our new students. Um, and this is actually a picture from last year, but it will look a lot like this in just a few days. Um, and I want to say a word, housing is a challenge for us. Uh, this is probably not news to anybody in this room, um, but it's a challenge that we face and it's a challenge we share with Madison uh, writ large. We're seeing a little bit, uh, a little bit less angst on this issue um, because we are reducing our uh, freshman class size this year compared to last, and we also have a dorm that is back in commission. Uh, uh, we have an 125 additional housing spots and salary, and so that eases the pressure a little bit, but it, the pressure is still there. We have more students who would like to be on campus than we can accommodate. Um, we typically, we strongly encourage all freshmen to live on campus. We do not require it, but we strongly encourage it. There's also data showing that an aggregate living on campus freshman year enhances both academic performance and a sense of belonging. Um, and so we do strongly urge that. Um, and then most of our students move off campus after freshman year, but some would like to be able to stay in part because the housing market in Madison is, well, tough. Um, and also so many places fill early fall when freshmen barely have, you know, they don't even know who their friends are yet. And then suddenly they're supposed to figure out where they're going to live. And for students who might not have somebody who can co-sign or who don't have credit ratings and that kind of thing, that can really be a significant obstacle. So if I could, my fantasy would be to have enough housing to house all of our freshmen comfortably, and then to be sort of an escape valve for as many you know, second year students who felt like that was what they needed. And similarly for, you know, transfers or international students, we're never going to be, we don't aim to be a four year residential campus. We think students gain a lot from being out in the community, but we wish we had enough housing that we could um, help re reduce the, the ways in which it's a huge stress uh, for some of our students and also sometimes in our community. Um, so we are uh, we are we are working on ways we can we can do that, and we've also turned some doubles into triples. And last year we had some study lounges that became uh, uh, sex tuples. We don't have any of those this year, um, although many of the students in them told us they liked it, but still not such a great thing. Uh, so we are uh, working on that, and we have also created an off-campus housing resource uh, to help with this. And will you raise your hand as our new director of our brand new off-campus housing resource? Um, so we're excited about that. Um, but this is a challenge, and I hope it's a challenge that we can work on together with the community in effective ways uh, for, for all of us. Um, I also want to say a quick word about construction, because there's a fair amount of it going on. Uh, we, are, uh, we are trying to uh, build some new buildings. Um, some of them are moving ahead. Some of them have faced some headwinds. Uh, but we are trying to grow, especially in strategic areas. Uh, for us to succeed, we need to be able to recruit and retain great students, and also phenomenal faculty. Uh, and I'll say just a quick word about some of the buildings. Um, here, sorry about that. Uh, so we officially broke ground in April on our new school for computer data and information sciences. So this is just a rendering. Um, there are no state dollars in that building. And uh, this is entirely being done with private funds. And we raised about 90% of our goal. But I just want to note, I want to note that this is computer science. It's a hugely important workforce area. And yet we are going ahead with this brand new building as a public institution without any state dollars, right? We are trying to solve our own problems, but we are a public university and we need the state to support to succeed. So we went with this building without state support, but that is not a functional strategy for us to be able to do everything like that way in the future. It just isn't. We're a, we're a public institution. We are part of this state and our donors, we are fortunate to have a lot of people who care deeply about the university, but they think the state needs to be a co-investor in what we're doing. Um, and so obviously the, 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 it's been uh, hard that this year we have not yet seen success with our engineering building, especially when you put it in the context of we're building CETUS without state help. Um, and now this other other uh, building that's so important for workforce needs um, is stuck uh, in limbo, but 
there is hope. We'll see where that where that goes. Now, CDIS, computer science is our number one major, um, and data science is our fastest growing major. And we are aiming to be a leader. In we already have a lot of strength, and we're aiming to be a real leader in AI, computer science, and machine learning. This is a place where we'd like to be one of the top places in the nation. But the infrastructure and the buildings matter. We are aiming for a spring 2025 opening. Uh, this is the chemistry building, uh, which we've expanded and renovated. Chemistry is uh, an on-ramp to a lot of science majors, obviously including chemistry, but not only. So many, many students use these buildings. And for kids who were at well-resourced high schools before this building, their high school labs were nicer than their college labs. With this building, I'm glad to say we've turned that around. Um, and so it's really great that we were able to get there. Uh, this is the, the Baki Recreation and Wellbeing Center. Have any of you been in it? Raise your hand if you've been in it. Uh, what'd you think? It's stunning. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and there are alumni and community memberships available. So feel free to come check it out. It's got gorgeous views of the lake, which can distract you while you're on the treadmill. It's got amazing fitness options. Um, there's even an ice rink and a rock climbing wall and all kinds of things. Uh, the soft opening was in May. Um, we're having the official grand opening next month. I'm thrilled that we have this building. It's about wellness in general for our students. But I also do want a world where where our academic buildings can be as, as successful and functional and beautiful as our recreation buildings, right? That's part of what we need if we're going to achieve our goals of being a place where we're providing a transformative education and we are, where we are innovating for the public good. And those are the core values for us um, as I see them for Madison. Quick Couple more updates on buildings. We've got Vet Med, which we're continuing continuing to expand and renovate, um, and we are getting to work on uh, Levy Hall, uh, which will be the first new academic building for the humanities departments in the College of Letters and Science in more than 50 years. Um, it's going to help us begin to move departments out of the humanities building. Um, that is that uh, brutalist building um, in the picture. Uh, some people call it a brutalist gem, other people call it just brutal, um, but it's way past its useful life. It's leaking, it has all kinds of problems, um, and we would like to find a way to move everything out of there and be able to use that prime space for something that would be very uh, exciting. Um, but we are thrilled to be moving forward with Levy Hall, um, which will ho house history, uh, it will house the Center for Jewish Studies, and a number of other letters and science departments. Um, we need to be able to get music and art out of the humanities building, um, and we're working on a number of fronts to be able to do that and then to begin to reimagine that prime corner. And this is the engineering building that we are hoping to be able to build. Uh, you may well have seen the headlines about this. We are advocating hard to get state support. Um, we, had, we are proposing that it's a joint, uh, a, that about $150 million of it would be privately funded and the state would fund the rest. We have $110 million of that 150 committed. That money will not wait for two more years. Those donors have made very clear that if we cannot go forward this biannual, they will not wait around and they may donate elsewhere and it may not even be in Wisconsin. So that's part of what's at stake here. Uh, engineering and business are the two most selective parts of our institution. This building will, would allow us to grow our number of engineering students um, meaningfully as well as create uh, the lab space um, and workspace that we need for the faculty and their research. We have a very broad group and coalition of business and industry groups who support this building. Um, and so we are, we're hopeful that, uh, that, that the legislature will uh, come to realize that this is a good thing, not just for UW-Madison, but for the state and for our, our, our future. Now, of course, I've, we're not just building buildings, we're doing all kinds of other things. I'll say a quick word um, about the teacher pledge. How many of you have heard of, have heard of that? Raise your hand. Okay, not so many of you. Um, this, we have a teacher shortage here in Wisconsin, right? There's, that's probably not a surprise to all of you. This is funded entirely from uh, philanthropy right now um, to help address that issue. It covers in-state tuition fees and licensing for new graduates who pledge to work at a Wisconsin school for at least three to four years after they graduate. 
Um, and so it keeps teachers in the state and it makes going to school to pursue teacher education affordable. Um, there are teacher pledge graduates working all across Wisconsin in public, private, uh, all kinds of schools. It's not restricted to any, any one category. Um, and we've got 95 of them here in Madison. And so it's a real example of a win-win for our students and the state. Uh, I would like to create, I'm, I realize I'm out of time and I wanna create a, the opportunity for at least one question, even if it makes me late. So I'm gonna sort of skip over some of the rest of this to take at least one question that might be on your mind. Um, but I, I hope you are an audience that knows what a major economic impact UW-Madison has. Uh, we are aiming to transform uh, the educational opportunities of our students, but we also are an economic force in this state. And we provide an excellent return on investment. We have an incredible impact in life sciences. This is the top 25 life science markets across the country. It's amazing that we're even on this list given our size. And I think one of the questions for our future is to ask how can we have this kind of impact where there's a win-win virtuous cycle between what's happening in campus and opportunities for innovation in the broader community. How can we build on this and create similar opportunities in other areas as well? We've also been doubling down on our engagements with the community in a lot of ways. I'm not going to say more about that. I've touched on that already. Um, but these are the sorts of things that I think we need to keep on doing so that we can be a, a true provider of innovation for the public good. And that is what we are. That is the Wisconsin idea. That is what we want to be into the future. So let me stop there. I'm about out of time, um, but I would be game nonetheless to take maybe one or two very quick questions and be five minutes late to my next thing. So thank you. <laughs> and thanks very much for being here. Mm -hmm. Question. Jason Joyce. Um, I, think, I think a lot of us who are graduates, um, maybe 20, 30 years ago, uh, could not have foreseen a time when the legislature would have said no to an engineering building on campus. There are a lot of uh, industrial, uh, architectural uh, building leaders in this room, a lot of bankers, business owners. W what can we do to help you move that along and to try to get this accomplished with the legislature in the next biennium? Thank you. We actually haven't given up on this biannual, bi bi biannual process. So, so first, let's we're going to keep those conversations happening as the legislature comes back in session. Uh, a number of engineering firms have signed on to uh, a letter of support. Um, maybe we should broaden that to look at other kinds of firms too that intersect and connect with engineering. And I would really welcome any of you being involved in that. I would also very much welcome you describing how you recognize and understand the need for this building um, for the good of the state, right? I mean, it's, yes, it's good for UW-Madison as well, but to be very candid, it's more important for the state. We're a high demand institution where students want to do a whole lot of things. If we can't grow engineering, we can grow other parts of our university, but that's not the right answer for the state of Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin, with its strong manufacturing track, with, with the opportunities for the workforce and growth as we look in the years ahead, um, could hugely benefit from our being able to grow engineering in particular. I know that's true. I think many of you know that's true. But for some of you to help articulate that story with us and for us would be very, very helpful. Um, so Brenda and I, Brenda can help follow up with some of you who might want to be involved in continuing those conversations. Thank you. I appreciate the question very much. I guess on that note, we're going to try to make me not too late to my next thing. And thank you very much for this opportunity. I look forward to meeting more of you that I haven't had the chance to meet yet and to continuing to engage um, on projects in community and together to make this amazing place even better. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. We are can't now earnestly thank everything that the university does and Chancellor Manukin for partnering with Downtown Madison Inc. and other organizations to create an economically strong, 
equitable, inclusive, and vibrant place to live, work, and visit. Without UW-Madison, we would not be here today. So huge, huge thank you again to the team at the University of Wisconsin. And anytime Chancellor Manukin wants a delicious chocolate chip cookie from Cassetta, it's on me. Oh, they're good. Oh, so good. All right, thank you all for being here. We're very excited. We have some excellent speakers coming up over the next few months, so please do pay attention to our website. Hopefully we'll see you all at the annual celebration on September 21st. The following week on Wednesday, a special date, September 27th, we are honored to have Department of Administration Secretary Kathy Blumenfeld, who will be talking about the state's Vision 2030. This is a very important presentation on the state uh, government properties, particularly Jeff 2, Jeff 3, and the state office building. So we hope you can join us on the 27th. And the following uh, month, I think it's on the 26th, I don't have in front of me, October, we have our great friends at the Madison, Greater Madison Chamber of Commerce, Zach Brandon will be presenting. And then in November, our state of the downtown. So there's a lot happening on the calendar. Please do check our website. Well, none of this would work if we didn't have our sponsors and our supporters. Huge thank you again to Chad Bartel and the team at Carlson, Black O'Callaghan and Battenberg, whose office is in the Cassetta building. We're gonna call that the Cassetta building. Apologies to Corey or Fiori. It's actually called Network 222, but we'll call that the Cassetta building. Thank you also to our good friends at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, our great friends at Lake Ridge Bank, JP Cullen, Urban Land Interest, Ripley LLP, and the Edgewater Hotel. We'll see you downtown in an event soon. Thank you all very much for your support. Have a wonderful summer and stay cool today.